Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, NASA awards Firefly Aerospace $93.3 million to deliver payloads to the moon in 2023. Also, Airspeeder aims to be the world's first electric flying race car. And just what we needed, drone pilot busted near Super Bowl. Welcome to the Air News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode today filled with the latest news, so let's start with NASA awards Firefly Aerospace $93.3 million to deliver payloads to the moon in 2023. They are expected to deliver a suite of 10 NASA-sponsored science and technology demonstration payloads to Mare Crisium in the moon's Crisium Basin. Firefly's Blue Ghost lunar lander will deliver the payloads to the lunar surface in 2023 in fulfillment of commercial lunar payload services, Task Order 19D, managed by NASA's Science Mission Directorate. Blue Ghost will operate on board payloads through lunar transit during lunar orbit and on lunar surface for a complete lunar day, about 14 Earth days, and well into the freezing dark of lunar night. In addition, the NASA-sponsored payloads, the lander will carry more than 50 kilograms of commercial payloads. Some of this commercial capacity remains available. Merichrysium has been the subject of previous lunar missions, including the Soviet landers Luna 15, Luna 23, and Luna 24. In 2012, the NASA GRAIL mission confirmed and mapped a mass concentration at the center of the basin. This lunar surface mission will explore this region's properties, geographical characteristics, and the interaction between solar wind and Earth's magnetic field. After these messages, drones are now delivering COVID-19 test kits. Those details after the break. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. And the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds in the unmanned vehicle communities. Drones deliver at-home COVID-19 test kits. Flirty and Vault Health have successfully conducted drone deliveries of its first FDA-authorized saliva-based COVID-19 test. In November 2020, Flirty and Vault Health announced a partnership to test drone delivery of the at-home saliva-based COVID-19 test. Using Flirty's drones to deliver the test kits to homes helps eliminate exposure risk and creates further convenience, especially for those who do not live in proximity to an on-site testing location. Flirty has now successfully conducted drone deliveries of at-home COVID-19 test kits. Hillwood and Bell demonstrate autonomous package delivery. Hillwood and Bell Textron have demonstrated a point-to-point -point UAS package delivery in North Texas at the Alliance Texas Mobility Innovation Zone. The Bell Autonomous Pod Transport flew across the Mobility Innovation Zone and delivered a package to a landing area, demonstrating its future commercial capabilities. Taking off on its voyage, the APT initiated a vertical takeoff and then rotated to fly on its wing, becoming nearly silent to the ground below. The APT reached a maximum altitude of 300 feet above ground level. Latest Apache variant can track UAVs. Following the conclusion of a three-day journey, 
The 1-229th Attack Reconnaissance Battalion at Joint Base lewis mccord Washington has become the first operational unit to receive the AH-64E Version 6 Apache helicopter. Crew members of this aircraft can receive UAS video in the cockpit, control UAS sensors and direct the flight path of the UAS. The crew members can also share real-time situational awareness of the operational environment and enemy forces to soldiers on the ground. As expected, there were quite a few drone incursions during Super Bowl. As if the arrest of a drone pilot near the Super Bowl wasn't enough, the Hillsborough County Sheriff is now reporting that over 70 drone incursions were reported, and a number of them are now under investigation. The Sheriff reported just before the big event that they had logged some 70 reports up to that point, and advised drone flyers to obey the TFR and FAA's No Drone Zone instructions to avoid possible prosecution. Other local law enforcement sources reported the number to exceed 100 reports, though only three were seized. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Airspeeder aims to be the world's first electric flying race car. Airspeeder is revealing first looks at what they call the world's first fully functioning electric flying racing car. The Airspeeder MK3 is a full-sized, remotely operated electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. It will compete in an upcoming remotely piloted airspeeder racing series that will stand as a technical testbed and feeder series to a manned racing series in 2022. The unveiling of the vehicle represents the realization of more than three years of development work to create a sport that will accelerate a new clean air aerial mobility revolution. A full grid of MK3 electric flying racecraft is currently being manufactured at airspeeder and Alada's technical headquarters in Adelaide, South Australia. More than 10 identical racing vehicles will be produced and supplied to teams in 2021. The craft is being developed and manufactured by a team drawn from leading names in aerospace, automotive, and motorsport technology, including McLaren, Babcock Aviation, Boeing, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Rolls-Royce. The Airspeeder MK3 racing series will be announced in the coming months. These remotely piloted races were presented to the world for the first time close quarter flying circuit racing at speeds of more than 120 kilometers per hour. Airspeeder's first races may take place even this year. Coming up, drone pilot busted near Super Bowl. I might be facing charges. I'll have more on that after these messages. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working and you're gonna hear more about it. Just what we needed. Drone pilot busted near Super Bowl. The office of United States Attorney Maria Chapa Lopez has confirmed the filing of a criminal complaint against Henry Alejandro Jimenez from Orlando with violating national defense airspace. If convicted, Jimenez faces a maximum penalty of one year in federal prison, according to the complaint. On February 3rd, 
the FAA issued a TFR covering an area extending outward from downtown Tampa. This TFR, along with others, was issued as part of the comprehensive security plan designed to protect and secure the events leading up to and including Super Bowl 55. That day, FBI agents saw a UAS flying near the Barrymore Hotel Tampa Riverwalk, an area within the TFR. The FBI agents then located Jimenez, the operator of the drone, nearby in downtown Tampa. Jimenez stated that he is an FAA licensed remote UAS operator and that he was aware that a TFR was in place for Super Bowl. Jimenez appears to have operated his drone without maintaining an uninterrupted visual line of sight for the entire flight. Furthermore, Jimenez flew his drone over people and moving vehicles, which is a no-no. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also catch episodes on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.